Hey, what up, weirdos? We're going to play some D&D here in a second. Episode session 11. It's been... The holidays happen, so it's been a while. And uh, we'll do a quick recap for all of us. We were kind of doing it just a few seconds before, but I'm going to do it for this. Uh, so the newly minted Bean Squad just killed Duke the Lamra Van Thamper and basically her syndicate of cultists and uh, when collected their reward from the Flaming Fist and were promptly told to leave. They were going to leave anyway because they picked up this weird puzzle box and a uh, talking magic shield um, and so they were going to go to Candlekeep and uh, so they left and with Rhea Mantleborn and Falister Fisk in tow, I believe that's correct, and uh, got into a little scuffle with a farmer who turned into a Cambion, and his name is Kadrus. And they fought this Cambion, oh, yeah. and <laughs> and uh, had some close. I think Jarvis got downed and then he's back up at one the and that's, veterans yeah the veterans also that natural 20 though yeah the natural 20 on the death save helps um yeah and that's where we that's where we left off you guys had just you had mine spike the cambion but he plane shifted as they do and uh yeah that's where we left off guys you get your your how's everyone's health Ow. Oh, Gargoth, you did a great job. All star of the fight. Definitely. Good job, buddy. And I pat the shield. But ow. Yes. You held me while I did the work. Yep, yep. Team effort. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I pat myself. And I'll go ahead and uh, give myself more of my lay on hands. Six of them. Stop role playing so well, Rillicos. Uh, dude, this cat's tail is just drawn to the webcam like he will not. <laughs> I like to believe that if you weren't playing a tabaxi, it would the cat wouldn't care. I'm right. just gonna believe that. No, he's just he's always like this. Just in the way. Uh if I turn you, say hello. Uh yeah, so Rhea is the healthiest of the group. Uh, Jerry's pretty bruised up. Um, I It's been several fun. weeks. So I forget what type of damage. So I'm just going to say he, he's got a bloodied mouth and he's very tired. You took some fire damage. You took a lot of slashing damage. Uh, you take a lot of damage in general because you're the hardiest of the barbarians. Um so you guys head get on your carts and ho your horses are still there uh and you start continue on your way and it takes a couple days and one of the nights camping um Falister is kind of talking you guys are talking to Rhea and just small talk and um she she starts talking about kind of the background of the hell riders and so we'll cut to that and she's you're all sitting around a fire and she says uh it was over a century past the great troubles began fiends roamed the lands to the north and west of el Terrell. fields were despoiled livestock slaughtered homes raised and people dragged off to a terrible and unknowable fate terror gripped the hearts of all a city's cavalry rode across the land, striking down fiends wherever they found them and suffering fearful losses, but it was never enough. For every fiend they destroyed, it seemed as though two more appeared elsewhere. The ruler of Elturel, the High Rider, asked his people to pray to the gods for aid. To everyone's astonishment, a mighty angel entered the city the next day. Her name was Zeriel, which means Companion of Light. The prayers of Elturel, we thought, had been heard, and 
help had come and for a time it had really seemed that was the case. Zeriel located the gate uh, through which these fiends were flooding out of and uh, on the fields of dead west of the city, Zeriel declared that she would lead the cavalry into Avernus, destroying the infernal host that was amassing there and striking a great blow against the forces of darkness. The High Riders sent out the Riders of Elturel, now, now numbering many thousands, with Zeriel at their head, riding a giant golden mastodon. With a great cry, Zeriel and her army charged through the gate. The legions of Avernus trembled and buckled, but did not crumble. Zeriel was defeated, and the remnants of her army returned to El Terrell, overcome with grief at the loss of their glorious general, but confident that the lords of the Nine Hells would think twice about threatening El Terrell again. There were great celebrations to honor the valiant knights of the Calvary, and they became known as the Hell Riders from that day on. Are you a hell rider? I was training to be one. I there's not many of us left. Oh uh, man, that's so cool. Well, I mean, uh, kind of. Based on that story, you guys lost, right? And so you guys are like the remnants of the losing army. They're survivors. One way to put it, I guess. Mm. Awkward. Yeah, but they survived going up against uh, Azrael. No. <laughs> no, it was we. Zeriel. Zeriel was leading us. Oh man! It, it was fiends, like devils and stuff, and demons and. Uh, yeah, and just uh, I mean, we fought a few, few demons, and we just like down, down in that. We fought one. Basement. Gargoth is is agreeing with everything you're saying. They lost horribly, he says. They I know, right? Defeated. What, what, I mean, weird way to draw pride. I'm saying this to Gargoth, yeah. but, but you, you get it. You get it. We're on the same page, buddy. Yep, sounds about right. By the <clears> way, <throat> Slobber Chops is with one of you still. He's with me. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and then you guys continue on. Uh. And you take the Way of the Lion, which branches, branches west off the coastway. Um, the weather on the way has gradually worsened. Dark clouds release heavy rain until the road runs thick with mud, yet you trudge on, passing by. Friendly merchant caravans heading north. On the morning of the fifth day, the rain subsides, but dark clouds remain. Ahead, you see a branch, a path branch from the wider road heading to the sea. A raven perches solemnly on a leaning post, bearing two signs that point like arms toward the west. One says the way of the lion, the other says candle keep. The afternoon sun shines through the clouds to illuminate the gray walls and pale spires of a time-worn fortress that stands majestically atop a rocky promontory overlooking the sea. The trail leads straight to it. I think I posted the picture in uh, general chat or pinned part of discord I don't know of candle key I think I did let me know if I didn't uh, uh, I don't see it did he? I do. yeah he did I'll cool. paste it. December 16th I was way ahead always thinking having high hopes for Getting to hell. Um, it's just like a picture of a city on the coast, right? Yeah, just more. There you go. It's big. More vertical and yeah. So you guys approach at the gatehouse. You're greeted by three monks in purple robes: a human, a shield dwarf, and a sun elf. Around their necks hang holy symbols of Denier, god of writing. Whose, whose symbol is a lit candle above an open eye. Welcome to Candlekeep, says the elf in common. A gift is required from those seeking admittance. You must donate a book or scroll that isn't already in the library's archives. Please present your gift for inspection. 
and Fowl. We gotta give him the Phallus, I believe that was how you said you had this covered. Yeah, I think this should work. And he presents the uh, Kalashite cooking book, uh, cook recipe book, and uh, they do some uh, waving of the hands, which is clearly magic, and uh, one of them walks off to the side and is talking to someone, and this process takes about five minutes, which is impressive, but uh, you would think it would need to be impressive if you're going to check your archives every time somebody wants to get in here. Um, and uh, they ad admit you into the city. And yeah. Uh, Fallister says, Would you like to go to Silvira right away? Or. Well, I mean, what does the city have to offer? We've never been here. At least I've never been here. You guys, any of you? Let's just. Never. There's a. There's a. There's an. It's like a norm. There's an inn called the Hearth. And. Uh, yeah, we can go a after we talk to Sylvira if you prefer. Yeah, sure. Let's you guys try. got let's a go good, to... like, silk district? Silk. Uh, we have some. <laughs> I th believe I heard there's some books made of silk from a from a distant culture. Of, uh, in the, maybe I could have heard them wrong. I'm not a I'm not Whoa. a uh, monk. A book made of silk. I might actually start to read for that. <laughs> Be so soft on your fingers. So when I was a kid, a book. when I was a kid, I had a Mickey Mouse that I didn't care about the Mickey part of it, but it had a silk tag, and I just rubbed the silk tag. That's it. <laughs> I get it. I do. Uh, we would have long rested on our travel, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Figure. So hit that long rest button. Want to make sure. uh, yeah, we can. Let's go. Let's go uh, talk to Silvira and get our bearings. Okay. Sylvia. What? What? Yeah, Silvira. Yeah, Silvira Savikas. Uh, hey, my point of exhaustion is gone. Thank you. Indeed. <laughs> So, the walls of this circular tower chamber are punctuated by arched windows that are currently shuttered. Bookcases filled with eldritch volumes stand between windows, while tables are crowded with specimen jars, alchemical equipment, and other clutter. Engraved into the floor of the chamber is a large nine-pointed star. A middle-aged tiefling dressed in wizardly robes stands by one of the windows, caught in a fugue of intense contemplation. Perched on the corner of a table nearby is a spindly little demon with wart, warty green skin, buggy eyes, thin black horns, and a whip-like tail. And she has her eyes closed, and she says, I can't tell you how pleased I am to see you again, Philaster, and you've brought... What have you brought me? And uh, Philaster says, I think you'll be pleased with the findings of this group and um, very much intrigued uh, and he introduces you all to her and she in introduces herself and does the formal greeting and uh, she says she sees some of you looking at the little demon and she says oh that's my familiar that's uh, that's Jezebel uh, is uh is that an imp? A closet. Oh okay. Still trying to figure out what an imp is. Never mind. I can show you in a book if, after we uh, finish up here, if you'd like. I mean, I guess that that would do it. I just feel like it would lack the impact. We, just, we were being spied on by M's, but we couldn't find them all. It was a whole thing. It's, it's fine. Anyway, anyway. Uh, ple pleasure to meet you, uh, ma'am. We uh, we hear you're very interested in, in all dealings with Hell, and uh, we had a few run-ins with uh, Hell lately. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what Philaster was there investigating various things, and... Uh, 
had told me that he thought you all were involved. Well, he said he was investigating the Dead Three, and uh, we happened to have uh, cleansed all of them. Great. That's just fantastic. Him. Yeah. It's a good word. Um, that, that, yeah. Uh, d- did that wonderful, wonderfully horrible shield you're, you're wearing help you with that? Oh, this guy? Uh, sort of. We had done most of the work already before we found him, but uh, he, he, he's going to help me uh, do some more uh, cleansing, if you will. Uh, Would you like to know a little more about that shield? That's one of the. Burnt, I mean, he burnt been, me up pretty good. Uh, that was uh, a mistake. He, I mean, I was there too. Just, That's one happens. of the things Philaster was investigating for me, and I was researching here, and I've come across some things I believe you do not know about it. So, the shield is a symbol of good's triumph over evil. Gazing at such beauty, one can easily overlook the terrible force bound within it. Gargauth is, I believe, its name, though it it calls itself the Hidden Lord. So Gargauth was, uh, and at that point she kind of stops, and you think, seeing as how Gargauth has telepathically talked to others, you think that Gargauth is talking to her, Mm. and she mutters some things, waves her hand, and uh, says, I'm sorry, uh, I was just getting distracted by uh, Gargouth trying to uh, speak with me, interrupting charming, me. right? Yeah. Uh, like... No, it's not so much charming. Anyways, uh, the Hidden Lord, as he calls himself, uh, it, it was a pit fiend sent by Asmodeus to corrupt mortals on the material plane, and there to amass such a following as to rival that of the gods. In that way, Gargauth became a sort of demigod, and having worshippers increased its power exponentially. But my, how the mighty have fallen! This shield has a power to corrupt everything around it. The Hewn family of Baldur's Gate has kept it for years now. Doubtless they'll want it back, but this shield should not be taken to any place where thousands of mortals reside. It needs to be locked away in an extra extra-dimensional space away from corruptible souls. No, I mean, it's I mean it's not that bad. It can do some really cool stuff. No, no, no. It, it can do cool stuff if your motivations are in line with Gargals, but I promise you. But I mean, like, he, he's been really helpful. That's in, the point. On, yeah, that's the point. But then he will cleanse you. I mean, he also wanted to light us all on fire. If you don't remember that, nah, he didn't. He didn't mean that. But I don't think he will. He just seems pretty forthcoming. Well, well now, now that you point. know that he's not an angel, that he was lying about all that. Well, sure, that definitely brings up some questions. I'm gonna have to talk to him about that. Um. But what I mean, makes you, said you that think the he's going to answer truthfully, of, though? Of goods triumphing over evil, like that—that's like that's what he's what we're doing, right? He's the evil, right? But the but he's but he's trapped, so we're good, right? No, no, no. It's still if he wasn't trapped, it would be much worse. You would be dead right now. Uh, yeah, but he is, so we can we can. No, no, no. It's still going to corrupt you, and it obviously it's starting to. How do you know it's not going to turn on all of us when we get in hell? This is Kairos we're talking about. He's our guy. Right. Like, Like his word is good enough for me. And he's the holiest of us all. I'll tell you what. I can give you a rather rare weapon if you allow me to put that shield away in an extra dimensional space. Now, see, now that is uh, interesting. Um, saucy offer. So that's a saucy offer right there. What, uh, what, what you got? What do you got lying around there, uh, Silvira? You have like some symbology of horror on your person, right? Uh, yes. I, I don't have the shield anymore because right. I, I left that. Um, <laughs> but I do have the coin. 
uh, the coin amulet. Okay. And she says, uh, you follow of follower of whore, are you a, a paladin? Uh, like. yes, yes. Uh, yep. Sometimes it's hard to tell between clerics and paladins and I get that. things. Uh, I have a rare mace, um, uh, it's called Heaven's Fall. Uh, as you know, I assume most of you know, any weapon that gains a name is usually pretty good. Does it have an actual angel in it? Because Gargoth told me he was like no, an angel this one or something. doesn't have, but it does um, considerable radiant damage to fiends of undead, uh, extra damage when you hit them, and it can cast a spell, I believe. Uh, maybe you, Jarvis, have heard of this spell, Guiding Bolt. You can cast it... Uh, at a higher than usual level um, with more power a certain amount of times uh, a day I believe it I'd have oh, to actually check. I don't know that one that one's a cleric spell yeah but you've read about stuff. Oh, okay like you're not like you don't see uh, divine spells and go nope not reading it nope cool <laughs> like you, it's I assume you're you're a sage and you would be interested yeah that makes sense okay never mind um and she she uh, says, and that would uh, all of you would uh, for returning the puzzle box is also something I'd like to take a look at. But saying mm. all this, returning this stuff, this is I will be able to help you in financially or with some sort of weaponry, most likely. Although this is you know mostly a repository of knowledge. Um, we do have some some weapons uh and of course, i'm interested in some scrolls yes i'm a wizard myself actually we yes i i uh you i you, guess i kind of dress like it you reek of wizardry <laughs> uh yes we we have plenty of spell scrolls and uh yes so just to confirm uh the heavens fall it, it i can't talk to it well it it can't talk to me right no no mm. I mean, it's just it become, I mean, are we not good, good enough conversationalists <laughs> for you? Did you? I mean, you guys are cool, but like on the road, Gargoth and I, we just we just can chat. I don't know if I open my mouth. It's it's handy. Did you? Did the Hunes come after you for taking that shield? Did anyone? The Hunes? Uh, no. Were the Hunes dead? The uh, the Van Thampers had the shield. The Hunes are another noble family. All of you know about. Um, and uh. Philaster says, I did mention on the road that I was imprisoned with one of the Hewn family. I was being tortured. I think oh, yeah, it was part right. of the deal with when they stole the shield we from the Hewn family. Uh, they took this lady. I forget her name. Uh, so, yeah, no, uh, no, no one came after us. Well, I assure you they will. Uh, including demons and devils who wish to have so, control of this. So are they going to come after you then? That's... I'm also... I'm not pushing this very hard because of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it seems like you're much more well protected than we are. I am very much. Uh, here, I would feel very comfortable that if they were to try anything they couldn't number one and if by some miracle some wish they got into candle keep which is that's what it would take uh they would be quickly ground into their various elemental parts well well do you have the maze handy i mean maybe if i can just kind of hold it get yes. a feel for it and she goes to the back and uh she is uh comes back a little while later and she's holding this mace and she's like you know it's a heavy weapon and uh and she hands it to you and it's it's a lot like um Sauron's uh Sauron's mace Gotcha. With the the fins on it that kind of look like mm -hmm. um, 
heat dissipators or whatever ra- radiator fins or whatever on like motorcycles that might ruin uh the, <laughs> the maze for you it's just... no I've, I've i've been watching lord of the rings literally okay. today oh, so okay. i'm i'm right there with you okay and um but it's much more um shiny and uh not not matted and (laughs) not so evil (laughs) not so evil looking um and it fills you when you touch it gargouth is telling you to put it down he's just going put it down put it down and when you touch it you didn't know that you were feeling this way before you touched it, but you feel like kind of this airiness fill your lungs and your shoulders kind of untense. You didn't, you didn't even know that you were tense and uh, yeah, it's well, it's, it's weighted perfectly and stand there and I'm balancing the the mace and, and Gargath in my other arm, you know, on my arm. And I'm just like, I will kill you guys. Why not both? Right. I will kill you. And I just tap the mace against the shield, like clink it against. All right, let me pull up Gargal's step block. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, now you've done and it. And fireballing lights <laughs> in the room. <laughs> Great. I Sorry. think I made Gargal mad, you guys. Should yeah. Should have had this pulled up. My bad. Yeah, he's a pit fiend. <laughs> I mean, she could be lying. Almost straight to demigod them. <laughs> yeah, but he's pretty sealed, so it's fine. No, it's fine. No, but it's fine, though. It's like that meme with the dog sipping <laughs> coffee while the house is on fire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This, this is fine. <laughs> this is fine. Right. Pulling it up. Here we go. Now I have this mace, so it's fine. They seem to balance each other So out. that familiar aura pulses out from the shield... Oh, right. That thing. And um, everyone except Kairos needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, thank God. Wow. 20 for me. Mod 20. Just rolled three very good rolls for these NPCs. 17. Ten. Um. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Jerry and that's it. Succumb to this. Uh, and uh, Jerry, you're terrified. You are just unbelievably terrified of the shield now, and it, you think it's it's looking straight at you and eating your soul or something. You're not even sure what it's doing, but you're just horrified. You're freaking out. Um, Okay, I'm going to get rid of the shield now. Gargoth, it's impolite to fart in closed rooms. Don't. You shouldn't do that, man. Could we Uh, feel it if we save? Oh, yeah, you definitely felt it. Uh, All of you, yeah. And Gargoth says, you have but a moment to release that weapon. Which weapon? Not to you, Jerry, Um, to uh, Kairos. I don't know. I feel a lot better holding this. Uh, I'm not going to do that as I go to, like, take the shield, take my arm out of the shield. Okay. And set it down. And uh, Sylvira says... Yeah, he did not like that, did he? No, should I hit it? Jerry's hard? just like slowly stepping back until he's like almost out of the door. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, go ahead. Instead of instead of like keeping the shield, what if I just like gave the good old gong whack and uh, put the power of whore behind it? No, that won't do it. Uh, no. This is a magical prison. That's been created to mm-hmm. not be destroyed. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. That just, this may seems pretty. It feels good. And Jerry is nice. no longer in the room. 
<laughs> Make another wisdom Jer. save, Jer. Jer, get back here. Where are you going? Twelve. Okay, you're still frightened. Uh, <laughs> you don't. Ha you don't have to keep moving back, but you can stay. Jerry is like kind of near the door, and he's he's journaling about it. <laughs> uh, she casts uh, Bigby's hand and picks up the the shield, and she takes it behind her desk and uh, sets it down and opens a drawer and a, a, like a desk drawer, a tiny, like this big, and the shield is huge, and she just drops it in the drawer and says, I feel, I feel better. So while we're talking about creepy, scary picture. objects that, you know, might kill us all, I heard, uh, you know what to do with this. I take um, that's not a might kill you. That uh, did, <laughs> did kill me. So I'm going to go ahead and say watch oh, out. Oh, yeah, you got thrown. This, this guy, he tried to try to open it after being told not to. He went flying. Um, I think we've established that we can't trust what Gargoth says, and Gargoth was the one who told me not to open it, so that basically means I was obligated to open it at that point, so I did the smart thing in the moment. But doesn't... Whatever. Retroactively. Whatever. Regardless, it did <laughs> almost kill you. It's so this thing! Do you know what to do with this thing? She's looking at you, we Kairos, took it from... and it's just like... It's kind of like... You'd have to make an insight check to get this, but I'm going to tell you. But she's giving you the look because you're smarter than Kairos. She's giving you the look like, is this guy really that dumb type of look? <laughs> uh, I mean, he did have... Oh, yeah, you clip was just luck. Never mind. And uh, she says, I have some experience. I have a lot of experience with uh, these things. I've made a few myself, so I may have a better chance. They're specifically made to not be opened and have... It sounds like you experience one of the deterrents that are put on them. This one I've been wanting to get my hands on because I believe that High, high Overseer of El Terrell has uh, been doing some suspicious things for a while, and I believe the answer is in this puzzle box. No one wanted oh, yeah, to hear my concerns because... Thavius Krieg was widely regarded as a hero who saved his city from an undead scourge, giving rise to the holy nation of Eltergard. The savior, Thavius, made all citizens of Elturel swear an oath called the Creed Resolute, which binds them to defend the nation of Eltergard. I met him years ago, and my instincts told me he was a charlatan. Afterwards, I grew to suspect that he had cut a deal with one or more powerful devils using the Creed Resolute to bind all of El Terrell to his dark deal. And I wish to prove my theory. And I believe the evidence is locked inside this puzzle box. So, yeah, Thavius Creek actually thought it was a great idea to give it to one of the Van Thampers. We, we found it th with Thurswell was playing with we, it when we were... Uh, d doesn't, like, the whole city disappearing pretty much prove your idea? Yes. Yeah. But this is going to prove it without it. Okay. I mean, people... Uh, excuse me, Rhea. Um... Your disposition has changed. It was a rather sallow disposition to begin with, but it has seemed just worse now that I was saying that. Uh, you were a hell rider, is that correct? And she says, I am a hell rider. Davis Krieg is what you say he is. He's a scumbag and he's burning in hell. And uh, she says, Well, yes, I. I sure hope he is. And she takes the puzzle box and she's going to attempt to open it over the next hour. And she says, uh, would you mind while I try, you can stay here if you like and watch me open this thing. It's going to take about an hour. I think, uh, you can head to the hearth, which is the town in uh or you can stay here what would you like to do and she's you did say you had some uh, other magical items perhaps and some scrolls perhaps we could, we're uh... still gonna do that but i really need to open this now how Just is the milk at the hearths in? what how how is the quality of the milk at the end <laughs> and falster steps in and he says 
uh, I think it's 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 pretty good. They have good stuff there, and Silvira's just like, <laughs> yeah, I, I I I it's probably good, and she half of her attention is on the puzzle box. More more and more so is going to the puzzle box, uh, and uh, she's gonna solve it. And what do you guys want to do? We can either cut to um, the hearth or we can stay here. I, I I'm gonna go down into the city because I now I now need to purchase a shield since I don't okay. have one. We should um, also buy some snacks for slobber chops. I have plenty, so oh. um, if you can come you, get a bowl of milk with me while we wait. You lose at least twenty snacks per day. We're all out of snacks. We need more <laughs> snacks. <laughs> and slobber chops is like. No, Kairos. He's saying that, but you can't understand him. Uh, no, Kairos. It's, we need snacks. We need snacks. There's Slobber Chops. <clears throat> so we need to get that as well. Uh, before I leave, I do make mention, like, just, just so you know, we did we did see Krieg die. He he drank some poison. He was doing something with Gargouth, experimenting. Falister told me. Oh, yeah, okay. Good. All right. I'm going to go do your thing. Uh, be careful. It it hurts a lot. I think I'll be okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you guys Me are going to do some shopping? A little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. What would you... Um... Uh... <laughs> so there's like a... There's a monk comforting... Uh, Jerry outside the room. Oh yeah, <laughs> Jerry's Definitely. just like he's drawing little pictures, trying to work it, work it, work it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really. He's drawing the same shield over and over again. <laughs> we still give a uh, player inspiration. Yeah, um, uh, I'll give. Uh, David's like monk's just that. like it's okay, it's okay. Like shield, <laughs> shield put it. away. That's so good. I've Shield's got gone, a. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to hold this for a minute? It's my new thing. It feels a lot better when you hold this one. What is it? It's just a mace. Oh. It's a really pretty mace. I mean, you can't yeah. hold it for long. It's still mine, but you know, it's just not the shield. Ah, it makes huh. it feel better. Okay. Cool. Oh wow. Yeah, it's got. It's got good non-shield qualities to it. <laughs> Quite the opposite, I would say, being a Yeah. I've got that, 20 you guys Azurite that shield? Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. It's uh, She put it in her desk. Uh, is the desk locked? I think so. No. Yeah, the shield right here. drawer took a hole. Or the, the desk drawer took like the whole shield, no problem. Small desk drawer. I'm assuming it's magically sealed. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's a good. Yeah, we're we're good. We're gonna head down into town. You wanna you wanna maybe get out of the get some fresh air. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's, let's go. We gotta get some treats for slobber chops. Yep, it's on the shopping list. All right. Okay. So I've got twenty azurite gems from room V thirty six that I would like to get rid of also. Okay. Uh, so you head to the. There's a couple shops here. Um. Uh, one of them's called the Lore Lamp, and uh, it's a, they're all smaller shops. Uh, it was just a small, small city, and a human monk is behind the desk reading a book currently, and he says, uh, "How can I help you? What kind of shop is this?" Just like a Just like general goods. General, general goods. Maybe you can ask about some. We're looking for. Uh, do you have any dried meats uh, for our cat? Dried Not the big one. Meats. The little one. Well, he's still pretty big. Not to insult you, slobber chop. <laughs> I believe we can. I can pull some out of the uh, food stores. The uh, what do you adventurers call them? You have such funny terminology. I forget now. Anyways, they're they're the uh, meals, the rations. R rations. No, there's other names, but it gets by me. 
I can pull some out of the rations. How many would you like? I uh, figure if we each have a pouch of 20 or so, that should stop our traps. Is that enough? Uh, Jerry, can you ask Slobber Chops if that's enough? Slobber Chops, is, is that enough? How much are we saying? 20 per person. Sack of 20. Oh, that should last us for a little while. Well, uh, I mean, uh, I'm still not entirely sure I'm going to hell with you, Jer, but, um, yeah, that'll do for now. <laughs> All right. Does Slobber Chops have, Jer, can you ask Slobber Chops if he has a preferred snack? Yeah, do you have a preferred snack, Slobber Chops? Like, is the dried meat good enough? Uh, caramel carrots. He likes caramel carrots. Maybe at the end, get him some caramel carrots. See what we could do. And yeah, we'll uh, just take the dried meat for now. The old, man, <laughs> the old man is his mouth is kind of a gape. It's just like <laughs> you, have any, uh, you have any caramel carrots or those ingredients <laughs> separately that we can make caramel carrots out of? It's gonna take a while to get all those snacks out of those rations. Um, can it'll take probably 15 minutes at least I'll be right back no we don't have caramel carrots I don't even know that was a thing <laughs> and 15 minutes later uh, he comes back with the pouches some of them are you know they're hap haphazardly thrown Stop. in pouches and uh, you all get them and he says I don't even know what to charge you for this, but <laughs> since it's a hundred snacks around there, why don't we say, uh, and I believe a ration is what, one gold or how much gold? Someone look it up real quick. Uh, I'm actually on it right now. It's half of a gold. Okay, so he goes, uh, 25 gold for a hundred. Sounds great. Right. Five five gold a pop. For four of, area. I was gonna say there's four of us. <laughs> He's giving us a hundred. Raya rail throw in. Alright. Alright, five, five gold, gold a pop. pop. For snacks. Yes, thank you. Uh, is there anything else? Maybe some equipment. Something uh, yeah, do you got any uh shields? Um we have a your standard shield uh just made out of steel and iron and it's got no insignia on it it's nothing special but it will protect you i mean that works unless you got something fancier um no i don't i um, i do have I, obviously, you're in Candlekeep. Have a lot of scrolls. Uh, I do have some potions. Ah, potions. Uh, definitely in the market for those. Healing potions, certainly. Uh, yes. I'll so, probably take a couple of those if you got them. Yes, it'll be... Uh, for two, it'll be 110 gold. Yeah, I'll take two of those. <clears throat> and the shield. And the shield. Go ahead and mark off the shield cost as well. That is ten gold. Will do. Yep. One twenty. Do you uh, know anybody around here that might be interested in gemstones? Uh, uh, I am, as a matter of fact, I am. Oh. Uh, I'm a collector. What do you have? I've got some azurite here. That's what it was, right? Yeah. You said V thirty six. Yes. Uh, Actually, I wouldn't know the names of them, so I'll just show him what I have. And he goes, oh, yes, Azurite. Yes, Azurite. Oh. Yes, Azurite. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, I will, um... He's looking at him very closely, pulls out a... What are the jeweler's eye things called? I always forget. Monocle? It's there's like a there's a name that jeweler oh. it's a different name anyways yeah uh, he goes I'll give you 180 gold for 20 azurite gems 180 seeing as we did make you go through the process of taking all of that jerky out of those rations yes I'll, I'll call it a deal 
Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I don't know why the <laughs> emphasis on that. What is uh, that, 40 gold a pop? No. How much do we owe each for the uh, treats? Five. Five. Sweet. Are you cutting Raya in on this? Yeah. On the uh, yeah, I, I will. Okay. I'll cut Raya this, I think this was recovered in the dungeon where she was with us, but not with us. Yes, correct. Oh, yeah. She she was literally <laughs> there, but she wasn't being role played by your dungeon master because he forgot. All right, so it's thirty six gold ahead. Nice, nice, nice. You said you had scrolls. Oh yes, I have plenty of scrolls. I'm interested in in scrolls. Who oh, are you? You said thirty six, Lucas. Yeah. Thank you. You're interested in scrolls. Any particular scrolls? Um, and I could technically out of game. I could technically buy scrolls that aren't from my level, and then and then learn, like hold on to them until I get that level, right? Yep. Okay. Um. Sorry, I have not looked at the fourth level or third level spells yet. Um, Fireball. Usually a popular scroll yep. is scroll of fireball. <laughs> yep, I just looked. I was just like, oh yeah, that one. Yeah. Do you, do would you happen to have that one? Uh yes, I do. I tend to keep that stocked. Uh, <laughs> it's a very f useful spell. Uh, this one will be four hundred gold. And I just heavy sigh, thinking of Gargoth <laughs> and the short time we had together. Yeah, but it was a good time, so... It was a good time. But, you know, all good things must come to an end, so... <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna think on that, and uh, I might come back later today. Okay. Anything else you'd like? Any other... What was the name of this place again? Sorry. Uh, the Lore Lamp. Do you have any Master Fletchers in the town? Oh, yes, we do, uh... His name is Mike. Mike the Fletcher. Could you point me in the direction of Could. his shop? Yeah, he's usually he doesn't really have a shop. He just does runs it out of his home. He's usually. Alright, uh, I'm, I'm gonna think on that, and uh, I might come back later. <laughs> Who? Where did that you? delay come Someone from? Someone has the. Maybe it's me. Nope, not Long me. Long delay playback? No, it's I've, me. I, I opened it up real quick. Oh, okay. That was uh, I've got like, it what? open, but it's muted. So I was like... <laughs> I was like, did I just I was time so travel? Con I was so confused. I was like, that's my voice. <laughs> I just got the email saying, hey, you're live on Twitch. Uh, so I see. Click on it. Uh, what was your question of the Mike the, the Fletcher. Fletcher? He's usually hanging out around the hearth, and he uh, surely he's he, he'll sell you some arrows. Uh, but um, yeah, he's got a gold beard and uh, bald head, and a big scar on the top of his head. Fantastic. I will go chat with him as soon as we're done here. Yes. Uh, anything else you'd like to ask me about? What's uh, what's see, what's your fanciest piece of items that you're selling? What's your <laughs> the creme de la creme? The creme de la creme of your shop. I have uh, other than a scroll, or the the fanciest other, thing I have other is than a scroll. A scroll. He's Other really people. into I don't, I don't read very well. They're in much. objects. I have a... Uh, I have a portable... It's like a fabric that you can <laughs> throw on any <laughs> surface and create a hole in... Almost ah. time and space. Oh, you're gonna say super soft. 
Oh, that sounds rather fascinating. Is it reusable? Can you pick it back up and, and put make it in your hole yes, somewhere else? Yes, and it will store things for you and won't weigh a thing. You put you can put things in it and uh it'll be there wherever you take it. How much are you selling that for? Sounds incredibly useful. Sounds incredible. Uh, this is uh, on sale today for eight thousand gold pieces. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll do some math and uh, see what our pooled money comes up to, and uh, we might be back for that. We'll see. That's uh, a lot of money. I do have a scroll for ten thousand gold pieces, which is a three hundred uh, gold piece discount. It's a scroll of illusory dragon. 300 gold discount. Jarvis, that sounds right up your alley. You, yeah. You that line around, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Pocket, pocket change. I mean, obviously, um, he's not, he cannot use it yet, but if he continues on his wizardly ways, someday, maybe. Yep, yep, someday, someday. He wasn't even, when he said that, it wasn't even like, he didn't even realize it's an insult at all. It was just like, it's stating a fact. Mm-hmm. Do you have any leasing options? <laughs> oh, we do have layaway, but your soul is what has to be put down before. It sounds like a really good deal. I would go for it. Sounds like more demon work to me. <laughs> okay, anything? What uh, was that? What was that spell called? Uh, illusory dragon. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think I'm. Uh... <clears throat> I think I'm good. Do you have some, like, just like, a couple hundred yards of silk? <laughs> I do not, but I believe uh, the other magic general goods store might have some. They carry more of the clothing, wizard robes, and things like that. So they may have some over there. Oh, yes, and the name of that is One. That's the name of the shop. It's one. One what? Just one. It's a stupid name. Well, actually, would they have armor as well, or is that something you carry? Uh, I'm fresh out of armor, as you can imagine. Us us wizards don't really... Sure, sure. Yeah. All right, all right. Just, just curious. Thank you for your time. We'll, uh, we'll be along. Okay. Be on our way. <clears throat> so you guys want to head to one? Sure. Or Mike the Fletcher. Either or. We'll say Mike. You can just call it and whatever the the nominal number is in D and D Beyond. That was an oxy. Well, I was gonna see if he had any sick bows. That's why I wanted a Master Fletcher. Oh yes. Uh, well, um, he's got his own bow. When you talk to Mike, but he doesn't have a, a bow. You could have asked. We'll just assume you asked uh, this guy, and he tells you, you know, that one might have a a bow, a sick bow. Also, you do have um, whatever Sylvira might re yeah. might request for her. So, um, you guys want to head over to one? Yeah. Okay. And a. Uh, Orcish fellow is behind the counter and he greets you and uh, asks what you're looking for in terms of uh, magic items. I just want some silk, just some regular, super soft, high thread count silk. I can get you some silk. Uh, how many? You just want like a, a, a square? Or a... Um. I'd like. Um, you could get a silk yeah, rope. Right. That's both functional and it's silk. Guards. I do have a silk robe of useful items. You have a silk robe? Yeah, it has patches on it that when you rip them off and throw them, they turn into an actual item. Like that what? sounds neat. Item. Like, this one that we have has a dagger patch on it. It's got a bullseye lantern. It's got a steel mirror, a 10-foot pole, a hempen rope, a sack, stuff like that. Can you like put that. the items back on and they become a patch again? Uh, no. I see. One How much? Uh, this one 
is well I probably should roll for it to see how good of a it's more than you're going to want to spend it's over a thousand <laughs> gold uh, I do have a magic we'll assume you asked about the bow just kind of being efficient about yep. time tonight uh and he says, yes, I have a magic bow. It will make you slightly better at uh, hitting things and <laughs> allow you to hit uh, m creatures who are imbued with magic. What are we looking at here? Price range. It's a great, great selling. It'll make you slightly better. <laughs> For you, it'll be five hundred gold pieces. That is that's reasonable. So I will be back maybe later in case someone gifts me a bow. Okay. Do you guys have any magical wands or staffs that do anything cool? Uh I do have a a uh wand of magic missile. And a uh, plus one staff. How much is the wand of magic missile? Uh, it's five hundred gold pieces, same as the. He pulls it out, and it's got this bronze handle, and then at the tip. There's almost like resin. It's like a blue resin, uh, like arcane magic has been frozen in time. So it's almost like fire, but you've seen it in spells before. So it's not, it's clearly not fire to anyone who studies magic. Um, but it's got this blue, like flame type look at the end of it, uh, on a bronze handle. And, uh, um, I'm sorry, what did you ask? How much? You said it was 500? 500. 500. And, uh, D&D Beyond is failing me right now. What kind of damage does Magic Missile, is it, it's not fire damage, is it? No, it's force damage and it automatically okay. hits. So Jerry is wearing that robe now. Uh, sir... Sir, please <laughs> put the p please put the robe on the mannequin again. Please. Who me? And I, he just starts to starts to back out. <laughs> no, no, sir, please. Um, what? Come back. I don't want to have to call the archmage. Please, uh, just man. put the. He takes it off. We do have a layaway program, sir, if you're interested. He, it he looked takes great. off his old cloak and, like, puts it on the mannequin. <laughs> no, Jerry. And he says your name. <laughs> like, how does, how does he have your name? Uh, All right. I mean, Jerry, you looked great. And Jarvis, I don't get it. I mean, I how do you go into a fight wearing all this fiddly bits? So soft. There's, there, there's just a piece of cloth. It's Comfy. terrifying. How do you do um, no. It's comfy. You can do it. I'm used to it. <laughs> you go into a fight wearing fiddly bits if you have large fiddly bits and don't need all that metal to protect you. You said fiddly bits. Oh. You want to throw down? We certainly can. <laughs> uh, all good fun, <laughs> of course. But I just say it's it's not for me. It seems weird. <clears throat> I mean, those swords, you know, they, we were just fighting those things with that demon and those swords. They really did a number on you, Jarvis. That's all I'm saying. It, the, the, the metal, it stops swords, usually. It's a decent job of that. I normally don't go near swords, so just saying. True. I have a, I have a tendency to throw myself at them. Whenever. Which I appreciate. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, no problem. I like to I like to watch from a distance. Did you see? I have several potions in my pouch. So if you need to, just pull one of those out and uh, go ahead and force feed me that again. <laughs> uh, so do you want the wand of magic missiles? Or... No, I'm gonna pass on it. 
only does one d4. So fire is probably done with that puzzle box by now. Yeah, she's definitely done by the with the puzzle box. Any other wands, or is that the only one? Uh, this is it currently. I'm sorry. It's, it's we have plenty of scrolls. Any scrolls you want? This is a different place, right? Yes, but it's candle uh, keep. Would you happen to have the scroll of feign death? I believe that's a divine spell, isn't it? Or no? Uh, I just had it up. Sorry, closed it. No, it's not. A, it's not divine. I think it's arcane. Uh, it is. It is gold necromancy. Da, da, da. Hmm. What is it? Um. It's a wizard spell. Yeah, it's a wizard spell. Yeah, I was just trying I to. Thought. Yeah, third oh, level wait. wizard spell. It's also a cleric and druid spell. That's why you think that. Sorry, I was trying to find it, and I filtered it by wizard, so I know it's wizard stupidly. But I was trying to find where it said what it was, and it doesn't. Which, oh, there it is, classes at the bottom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Bard, cleric, druid, wizard, the undying. All right. So, you want to head back? Hello? Wait, yes. did, he, yep. did he have it? Uh, yes, he does. How much is that scroll? Uh, this one is 350 gold. I might oh. be back. Does he have any regular uh, breastplates? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, does he have splint mail? No. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> medium... Breastplate's still a medium armor. Yes. Yep. Uh, With no stealth disadvantage. Yeah. So, it's uh, swell. I, I'm trying to find out how much it is on D&D Beyond, and I cannot seem to... 400 guild. Yeah, I was going to say. Is that standard? 400. 400. Breastplate. Oh, there it is. Cost 400. I've got 400 gold. I will take that breastplate off of your I mean, hands. you guys should have sh a shitload of gold. I mean... We do. Yeah. I've got exactly a thousand. <laughs> How do you on have the gold? nose. Add your platinum in. I only have 10 platinum. Or if like you go more. into... Uh, if you click on your right. money in D&D Beyond at the top, it'll add it all up for you. No, yeah. I, 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 I feel I, like I, you missed I'm platinum 300. at some point. <laughs> I have 600. Yeah, I have... 55 platinum. Yeah, I have 55 platinum. I have 57 like point, platinum, so yeah. you should also have 55 platinum. Because we haven't Correct. spent any of it, I don't think, for any reason. Yeah, you, you no forgot to add that in at some point. To that being a clerical error on my part. I can go back in my notes and figure out when that happened, but it sounds like game you nine, just forgot to we add that. <laughs> Game 9, we acquired 200 platinum. There you go. You should talk to your treasurer about their I'm bookkeeping. Rich. This now you have money. Me is driving me crazy. <laughs> I need to do something about that because I can't stand. Yeah, so, I'll take the plate armor. You or mean the, the breastplate? breastplate? Okay, mark off four hundred. Mm, breastplate. You're buying me plate armor. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else with this orc man? What no was the sir. name of this place again? So I can write it down in case I come back. One. 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 One, like the number one. one. <laughs> what? One. <laughs> like O and E? <laughs> I'll, I'll ask him if he'll knock off five gold and he can have this <laughs> leather armor I'm wearing. Uh, I'm not interested in uh, that leather <laughs> armor. It's, I'll take it. I'll give you one gold for it. Three. Deal. So 397 gold. <laughs> Jerry goes, all right, we should be heading back to uh, good old Sylvira. And then just as he crosses the threshold, he bangs his, he bangs his ax on his head. Like as a, <laughs> like as a show of solidarity with the orc. He's just like, Ugh! the orc is like, 
It's a half orc, so it's just. <laughs> no, I'm I'm half orc, or Jerry's half orc. This guy's half orc too. He's just orcish we... looking. Yeah. And he, but he looks at you like. Okay. R- wrong type. Uh, wrong type, Jerry. He didn't seem. He's 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 more like Jarvis than like you or me. Yeah, I don't think he gets it. <clears throat> I get it. I'm solid, and I and I take my mace and I. Gently bonking on my head because it would be much more problematic if I hit it hard. You guys are leaving the place and some Jerry monks. Gets really excited. He just I, starts... I tink my horn. There you go. Yeah. Tink my horn with my man. <laughs> some monks walking by are just like. <laughs> they don't get it either, Jerry. We get it. <clears throat> monks are very comforting, though. So. It always felt a bit uptight to me. Never quite vibed with them myself. So, um, heading back to Sylvira, she sees you enter and she goes, she, she looks more tired and, uh, like she's been working hard and she, uh, welcomes you back and she says, I, I think I almost, I think I almost have it. Jezebel, will you go get me, uh, you know, the liquid that I use for these things and the closet flies off and goes and gets it. It's this flask of dark liquid and uh, go ahead and pour some on this spot right here. And Jezebel pours some on the spot of the puzzle box and it starts moving through the maze-like troughs carved into the box surface and she's tipping it in various directions to like get it to go certain ways and is making slow movements then all of a sudden twitches it back to get it to move us to a certain um uh spot and uh then the uh the horn inlays pop loose and fall to the ground and see i see i tried that but uh it didn't work when I did it, I did that same thing. Yeah, and, and she's taking, or she's just kind of like ignoring, half ignoring you, and she's <laughs> taking it and opening it, and out from inside the box uh, come nine chain linked plates, uh, three inches on a side, cast of this very dark iron, uh, nearly black, and it's stamped with infernal runes that are iridescently shining and catching the light of various uh, sources of uh, from candles and such and she starts reading in infernal any of you speak infernal I think we all do yeah except Jerry yeah except Jerry there you go and uh, she she says oh that's this, I'll, I'll translate it uh, after and then slobber chop says to you Jerry Hey, Jerry, I got you covered. I speak Infernal. Sweet. Of course he does. <laughs> it's a Tressum that speaks, yes. Uh, and she, in Infernal, she says, Be it known to all that I, Thavius Krieg, High Overseer of Elturel, have sworn to my master, Zeriel, Lord of Avernus, to keep the agreements contained in this oath. I hereby submit to Zeriel in all matters and for all time. I will place her above all creatures living and dead. I will obey her all my days and beyond with fear and servility. I recognize the dispensation of this device called the Solar Insidiator, hereafter called the Companion, in my capacity as High Overseer of El Terrell and its vassal territories. I acknowledge that all lands falling under the light of the Companion are forfeit to Zeriel. All persons bound by oath to defend El Terrell are are also considered forfeit. I further recognize that this dispensation will last 50 years, after which the Companion will return whence it came, taking El Terrell and its oath-bound defenders with it, if that is Zeriel's wish. All this is my ever- everlasting pledge. And she... Shit. Wait, was the cu- cube called the Companion? Yeah. So it's the Companion Cube. No, the the, the light companion. over the city. Yeah, that's, oh. just, that's the cube. Not this cube. Whoa. Got it. Okay. 
Yeah, you've heard of the companion over the city before, and you just in general. Uh, so, so did you just say, Silvira? I'm having trouble wrapping my head around this. Um, Zariel is the Lord of Avernus. The Savior of Elturel is a bad guy. Yes. Well, shit. And Rhea just walks out. <laughs> Rhea's been having she's, a rough go. She's having a bad couple of days. Everything she believed in has been turned upside down. I don't remember agreeing to that. Did you guys agree to that? <laughs> well, we, well, we I, didn't live well, in El Terrell. I, I did, but I didn't. Um, I lived there, but I didn't agree to this. But I wasn't. I wasn't a protector of El Terrell. I wasn't a Hell's Rider. Oh, shit. Does that mean that Rhea is officially bound to? Zariel through this very oath because she's a hell rider. Yes. Doesn't that Rhea? Rhea? <laughs> <laughs> um I I go after her. Where is, is she? Is she gone gone? As you as you exit the room you see a hole in the wall. Uh and the wall you look at it and it's like I didn't hear anything. It's like paper thin plaster wall. Uh <laughs> she just got lucky and managed to not find a stud. Um, and, uh, she's making her way down the spiral staircase and, uh, she says, what do you want? I'm done. Um, you're not possessed by a devil or a demon, right? No, I'm you're, not possessed. You're cool, right? You think I would tell you if I was? I'm not possessed by a devil. I'm not, um, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna doing use, well. I'm going to use divine sense real quick. Um, does she seem like a fiend? No. All right. We're, we're good. We're good. Uh, Are you done? Let us know if you need any help. Yeah. Okay. Processing. Bye. If you want to kill some things, you know where to find us. All right, bye. I'm, go I'm going to hell with you guys if you... I'm going to hell. Oh, yeah, okay. Then we'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Cool. And Walk it off. Yeah. <clears throat> she, she was walking it off, and you come back into... Whoa, guys. She is angry. I but she's be. coming to hell with us, so she's still on board with that play, and we'll see her in a bit. She's she's walking off. <laughs> hell riders, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why they're called that. Uh, seems rather fitting at this point. But don't say that to Rhea, because she'll probably punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and kind of uh, smug, a little bit smug, is Selvira being that this proves without a shadow of a doubt what she suspected and um she says well uh you guys are going to hell correct that's the plan yep. um we actually have no do we do any of you we still have no idea how to get there right no no idea that's what we're here to ask you about. Yeah, I can cast Plane Shift, but I can't cast it in Candlekeep for obvious reasons. Uh, totally obvious. <laughs> and um, <laughs> she says, uh, A wizard named Traxagor lives in a tower 20 miles from here. I've loaned him a spell book or two, so he owes me a favor. I can have you delivered safely to his tower, and he can use a Plane Shift spell there to take you straight to El Terrell. Even more importantly, Traxagor is looking for an old friend of mine, someone with a history of battling devils in the Nine Hells. I think you'll enjoy her company very much. Her name is Lulu. It's her last Lulu, name Lemon. Uh, what does she, what she look like, this Lulu? That's a interesting name for someone wanting to go to hell. Um, well, I'm not sure what form she takes right now, but uh, you'll find out. Uh, and uh, let's 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 get square here. I have some magic items. You let me know if you're interested. I do have a bow for you. I have two bows for you to choose from. Oh. Uh, one of them, I believe in in. I just involuntarily purr. <laughs> and it's super loud. Yeah. You're a big cat. Uh. And she goes, this one I believe it's commonly referred to as a vicious longbow because uh, when you hit particularly a, a vulnerable spot, uh, the damage is is 
increased even more than it already would have. So basically, when you roll, yeah, uh, when you crit, the target takes an extra seven damage on oh. top of the crit. Uh, and cool. then she says, I also have a, essentially a plus two, just no fanciness, just a plus, t- I mean, that's still well, pretty damn good. Will the first one help me against things that are magically, that are yes. immune to yes. regular bows? It's a rare, it's a rare uh, bow. Both, both I'll, will. I think I'll take the plus two. Okay. Go ahead. Add it. Beautiful. Uh, Jerry. I, too, have a... Uh, hold on. I want to check something real quick. I, too, have a vicious great axe, if you'd like. Uh, do you need? You just heard what I said to Rolikos. Do you need me to? Sorry, what does vicious mean? Just means when you hit, uh, when you hit a crit, um, it does a certain amount of extra damage, seven damage, of the of the damage you're giving. But only on a crit. Yes. How much? Okay. Uh, she's gonna give this to you, or she has a. Um, let me see. Does it have a very dull backside of It does, yeah. In fact, uh, it does. I like that. I um, think hitting someone with the dull side is like pretty Do you want to do, do I do have a mall? Are you interested so, in a mall? Malls are fun, Jerry. I was I was talking with that for a minute. Mm. It's blunt sides all the way around. <laughs> good, good. Oh man! Good clarifying. <laughs> yeah, Jerry. No offense, but that might be a little bit more up your alley. How do I look up uh, what a mall does, or what this particular mall? It's a plus two mall. It does two d six damage as opposed to one d twelve. Sweet, I'll take it. Gives you better odds. So plus two, it's a rare weapon. It's a plus two maul. And uh, d- what scrolls are you interested in, Jarvis? Um. Well, originally I was thinking about fireball, but we are going to hell. So. Um. I do have something interesting, Jarvis. If you allow y- me to show you. Yes. And she goes back behind her desk and she pulls out this tiny little, like, this little pouch about this big. (laughs) And she says, this is going to sound weird. I don't know if you've read about this. (laughs) But there are beans in here. (laughs) What do these beans do? Everything. I'm and not. Gar- Gary's it. dying laughing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Gary wants it, but Jarvis doesn't know that yet. Uh, I, that's the thing. They're magically imbued with different effects, and it's v- nearly impossible, save a wish spell, to find out what each one does. So it's a bit of a random. Uh, a random thing. Uh, but it's v- very. Uh, it can be very powerful, uh, from what I've heard. Uh, greater than anything here I can offer you. Um, but it can also not be very powerful. Mm. We aren't called the Bean Squad for nothing. They're I think I'm going to take those. Beans Jarvis. Oh, I, 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 I'm well aware. That's, I'm like, this is Jarvis <laughs> right now, like very intrigued. <laughs> I will take those. Okay, I'm going to roll 3d4 to see how many you get inside. All that, uh, that mall's like slightly better than my great axe. It's a plus two. Yeah, so it's it's slightly better. It's plus two better than my great axe. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah. It also will do uh, <sighs> things that are resistant to non-magical weapons. Holy it, shit, you're lucky, They won't Gary. be resistant to that. Did I, like, max out the die? No, it's it's uh, it's above, it's on the high end of the bell I, curve. Nice. I missed what you were saying, Brian. 
Um, things that are resistant to magical wep or non-magical weapons, you will now be able to hurt them at full damage because this is a magical weapon as well yeah, as being plus two. It happened Correct. a lot. And it will happen more as we go. <laughs> yeah, once we get into hell, you're going to appreciate Pretty that. much everything. Thanks, Sylvira. And plus two is Good. significant um, in terms of like the, the math behind how fifth edition works uh plus two is is very good yeah uh, yeah i mean i can yeah right right, right when i added it to my actions i'm just like holy shit yeah it's weird yeah, it suddenly makes a, a significant dis difference <laughs> let me tell you if you start stacking plus two armor pieces <laughs> yeah i was just i was commenting on the damage like i get that it's mm -hmm. gonna be more, more likely to make a hit yep. uh but then the damage is more too than my great axe yep I did not expect. You look in the oh, bag, yeah. Jarvis, and there's nine beans inside. That's enough. Dope. I can this have is, fun with these. This is going to fucking derail this campaign. <laughs> Get a mummy lord. <laughs> Get a mummy lord protecting some cool shit. But I really, like, I can't I'm... not do it. So happy. I like it. I also like it. We are the bean squad. Yes, that's it's, exactly. It's, I all. It's wonderfully. I also like it because we used it in our one shot, and it was pretty cool. It is pretty cool, and it's, it's like a deck of many things light. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, it's like Still significant. It's like cocaine before you get to meth. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's, 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 that'll work. <laughs> um, yeah. So nine beans in there. Write that down. I did. Okay. And um, is it the notes for the item. Uh, she says we give this to Rhea. <laughs> uh, she, I think she'll want it. And it's a magic weapon. Uh, what's another? It's it's a it's a long sword. We'll say for Rhea. And write that down. I'll take it for her. Okay. Is it a plus two? No, it's a plus one. Is there any way is is her soul like sworn? Is that what we determined to Zariel? She said it was, according to um, Kairos, but she wasn't in the city when it happened. Okay. So Either let's... way, I, I think that's immaterial. Um, well, I was just going to ask if there was maybe a way that you know of, if it is sworn, to get her soul unsworn. Uh, kill Zariel. Oh. That would probably Noted. be good. Uh, I did want to show you one other thing that we happened to find in the Van Thamper estate that I uh, forgot I had until I was rummaging around in my bag when we were shopping. And I pull out the two pieces of a sacrificial dragon dagger from V36 and show them to her. V36 in the in the villa. Correct. An ivory hilt with gems and draconic writing on it. Retrieved from the Van Thamper mansion, V36. After you got a cloud of gas thrown in your face. Oh, did I? Yes. Sounds about right. There's definitely a trap when you open that. Yep, sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> this is one that says Fang and Runes. That does sound familiar. I didn't write that down, but that does sound familiar. I don't think I speak draconic. And she, um... Know. She does a simple flip of her fingers and mends the the it's broken. Right. And uh and so she mends it. And she says, um I don't think it's mad. I think it's like a, a ceremonial piece perhaps. But I can certainly I I'm pretty sure it's I mean so we had run into at the Van Thamper bathhouse where the dead three were. We found some other dragon stuff, and as soon as we leave, some like shady fellows and dressed in all black, they came and, and alleviated that from us as it belonged to them. They said they were followers of Tiamat, if I'm not mistaken. And then we like go to find this other dragon dagger, and you've read a lot, certainly more than me. Thought maybe it would mean something to you. I uh, have a weird, kind of slightly off-topic question about that. Was there it's a great bathhouse? Uh, no, top, not that. Top marks. Uh, is there 
Was Ultis the cultist with them? Uh, yeah, yes. he was the. He was the. Oh leader. my god, that guy. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. We had we had like chests of money. I am gonna cleanse him the next time I see him. You know, sure. he Definitely he has been in. I swear to the gods, he's been in every single cult in all of Pharaoh. <laughs> he. He joins every cult, and then he makes his way up to middle management, and then joins a different cult if it gets dissolved. He just goes from cult to cult to cult. I've ran into him three times. He's been trying to break in here with three different cults. Well, if you want to bait him again, uh, this might do it. I mean, he's he's like, I, I don't know how he's not dead, and I don't know how they keep allowing him into the various cults. I'm sure his name has gotten around. Well, for our part, it was um, uh, he's an opportunist. We were rather haggard after killing um, all of the dead three. Again, cleansing. Sorry. He can't even get above middle management in these cults. And she just well, keeps... that's ridiculous. <laughs> now I just feel worse for giving him all that all that shit that we could have kept. Do you want to? Do you want to be like a manager of a cult? No, I'm just like it's so weird. It's like it's just odd that he. It's an odd situation, Jerry. And Slobber Chop says, Yeah, Jerry, that's pretty weird. I mean, he somehow survived and just keeps <laughs> jumping from cult to cult. Like, that doesn't happen. Usually they die or, you know, they ascend or whatever their thing he's is. He's a free agent. Yeah, I mean, he's lucky is what he is. Um, and, well, if we uh, see, him, we see him again, well, what do you want us to do with him? I, I, I really don't know because he'll probably just get out of the situation like he gets out of every situation <laughs> and join a different cult. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll, I'll cleanse him for good measure. Yeah, yeah, we'll look into we'll look into cleansing that one. Uh, you'll need. I have a map of Avernus. Uh, it's oh, not that very, would be incredibly helpful. It's not very accurate. I think it no. made the person who made it went mad. Of course. As you can imagine. Hey uh, guys, why are um I know, but I just want to make sure that you guys know. Why are we going to Avernus? Um <laughs> to um hey the devils. Uh, are you, do you want Demons. to to smite evil? Uh, I thought that you guys are adventurers like Right, so El Terrell, um, you guys, you know, I'm, I'm, I want vengeance for my friend who's dead. Yeah. Um, oh, oh yeah, they're yeah. with us. Yeah, it's Dave who's not remembering. Um, <laughs> also, Dave, if you don't want to go, you can make a different character if that's what you want it to. <laughs> um, or do you think you can't find enough more, motivation for like, Jerry? I was more just asking the specifics of why we're going because we seem to have done what Zaj wanted us to do we got the pub but like no one actually told us like go to a in and this is, mansion you know, with us yeah he was in Mandarkai's mansion this is what I was saying at the beginning of the campaign is like you are we're playing this adventure and you need to find motivation for your character uh this there is motivation already here. Uh, there's Mandarkai's mansion. There's your adventures, and this is what you do. Uh, so there's kind of like this meta gaming thing that's going to happen as a player. That just you, I don't know. Like if it's more of a thing. That's why I was asking if it's like you don't. You're kind of sick of Jerry. We can make a different character for for you. No, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. I was just I. It seemed like we had completed all the tasks in front of us. So I was just like, why are we just yeah, so it's, on it's, to it's we know that the the stuff that happened in the mansion, the pre-campaign backstory stuff that happened in the mansion was hell ish associated. Um, in some no, no way. I'm just saying, but like we went to the mansion because because Zaj paid us to. No, 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 no. no. This is pre us playing the game. Mansion. Not Van Thane. Oh, the haunted mansion, the backstory mansion. Yeah. Um, where all your friends died and you had a near near death experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the job wasn't finished. <clears throat> that one was hell hell inclined. Um, 
Then we also have the entirety of El Terrell that vanished. I have personal stake in that based on my character. I mean, even uh, your city that you protect is next up on that list. Hey, that's true. Uh, Jerry, check your fr front right pocket of your shirt. Uh, it says, uh, your whole family is in hell being tortured. Signed, <clears throat> Zeriel. <laughs> Motivation. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> I forgot about my family. My dad, my mom. Oh my and then god. it says, all, while you're looking We've at it, it says, it says, P.S., they're all being burned constantly and not dying. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's pretty real. Oh my god! And yeah, there can be a lot of reasons that we're trying to go hell. <laughs> Anybody else want a reason? <laughs> out, of, I, <laughs> uh, out of game. That's really funny because I don't think I've shared this with the party yet. But my family was also kidnapped and taken to hell. So there's that. <laughs> this is in real life that's not in the game this is oh, <laughs> oh just kidding. Uh, gotcha yeah so there you go you got two there things in go. common now right um so do you want to go to hell <laughs> yeah um before we finish up at uh with uh what's her face elvira uh do you thank you for the item i was wondering uh yeah, do you have any spells uh that scrolls anything i can copy at a discount perhaps before we head into hell oh uh, what's what uh, spells are you looking for uh i like ritual spells um ritual. perhaps if you have uh identify is that what you're looking for uh tiny hut uh oh. yes you know what i'll let you do that for free oh thank you you're welcome how long do you think it'll take you uh okay. it's a here's the map ah oh, crap i can't copy it until i'm that level huh yep okay i, I can get you a scroll here. it's not a big deal okay thank you appreciate it please don't i'm doing this out of the kindness of my please don't sell it or anything Oh, definitely. We'll not do that. Okay. All right. Um, and she sails. Uh, so, as I said, the map's entirely... Might not be entirely reliable. Went mad making it. Um, so you guys are going to take off to head to Traxagor's Tower? Um, before we go, I wanted to stop by at... Uh, I wanted to go pick up that Wand of Magic Missile. I decided I'm going to get it from the lore lamp. Okay. Go ahead and mark it off. How much was that cloth again? 4,000? The robe? No, the the cloth with the portable hole, basically. Oh, no. 8,000. Yeah, it was... 8,000? Was... On sale. Okay. Yeah, it was like 8,000. I, I can't even... even pull together for that. And just to confirm that it wasn't just the shops I asked at, this city would not have splint mail, correct? Correct. Okay. Cool. I got some leather armor if you want it. No, oh, no, I sold it. Just kidding. <laughs> and I don't. Do you want... Um, uh, forgot what I was going to say. Uh, so you got the Wand of Magic Missile, and you got... You guys are all fill, filled up with potions. Do you guys... What's your guys' carrying capacity right now? I'm at uh, 106 I'm at, pounds. I'm at 78. All right. You guys interested in a bag of holding? Ooh, I'm very... I'm at 99.5 pounds. You guys but are I'm still pretty boy. good. Yeah. I'm a big boy. Yeah, I'm still fine. Oh, wait. Um, I'm just going to ask her because I've been carrying these around. Does she want any cultist devil masks that we found? Oh, oh sure. Yes. Excellent. I'll uh, add these to the museum. There you go. Two of them. Which one was Ultis's? 
Do you have ultises? Or no, no, these are dead three. Oh. Masks. He was a member of the dead three. That was the, one of the first ones he was a member of. It's. He's he really should have a biography written about him. Maybe I'll do that next. Um. So bag of holding. No. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I. I mean, one. We're not going to have much of a chance to get one in hell. I don't think so. I have a bag of holding for you, but it will cost you uh, 200 gold. That's a big dis discount. Yeah, I'll pay it if nobody else wants to. I'll, I'll split it with you. I gotta, I gotta save up for some sweet armor once we find a good smithy. That's fine. I tossed 10 platinum into it. Jarvis, you can get the other 10. Yep. Um, do you guys turn to my party? Do you guys think? I mean, when we were fighting the, the devil, um, he was flying around, and none of us can. Some of you guys that like to get up close and personal, uh, weren't able to hit him. Do you think if I uh, could cast fly on one of you, I could make one of you fly? That would be beneficial to you guys. Yeah, that'd be super useful. I mean, word on the street, I haven't played with it yet, that uh, I can shoot bolts of radiant light from my mace now, so that should be useful. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Jerry flying around the battlefield would be Jerry. Does that sound fun? I think it'd be insane. Downright insane. That would probably be a lot better if I'm raging. All right, I'm going to try to find a rage scroll fly. for fly. Rage fly. Fly rage? Um, you're gonna find a scroll of flying. Yeah, uh, I believe that is uncommon. Do you have it pulled up? Yep. Um, right here. Do, do, do fly is. Do, 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 do. Where would it show that though? It wouldn't that. show rarity. It would just show the level. What level is it? Uh, it's a third level. Yeah, so 400 gold. Okay. I will... <clears throat> um, that's... Uh, I will buy that. Okay. Done deal. Uh, heading off now? Heading off now. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> uh, so Vira ushers you to a crescent-shaped landing platform with a stunning view of the sea... Waiting for you atop the platform are several griffins with saddles, their handlers standing nearby to help you on to the griffins. She says, the griffins have instructions to fly you to Traxagor's tower. Don't worry, it's perfectly safe. No Dude, worry at all. We should use one of these to fight a flying devil. You should, if you can get a, hit, a hold of one. And you guys get on. And What's my griffin's name? St. Barnabas. <laughs> what do you say, St. Barnabas? You want to go to hell? Yeah, you want to go to hell. <laughs> What's that other one's name? <laughs> Clipped. Oh. Wait, what just happened? I was not paying attention. <laughs> We're getting the Griffin's names. The other Saint ones? Barnabas and Beagle. <laughs> Clipped. Oh, Clipped. Clipped. <laughs> And then you want the other two? Of course. Okay, you got uh, Shipsha. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and you got Colonel Mustard. Awesome. Oh, wow. Is he a real colonel? Uh, you do see, like, a, a badge on the saddle work, the harness, but you're not sure if it's, like, a metal or if it's just ornamentation. <clears throat> uh we just got three griffins. Four. How many of you have a griffin. Oh, I miss. I was adding to my spell. Sorry, I totally missed that. That's awesome. She, but they're not like griffin. ours. Ours. <laughs> the griffins oh. are flying us to the wizard's tower. This is like wow. Oh, I thought we from... got to take them to hell with us. <laughs> no. Lame. I give one of the griffins one of the snacks. Uh, Jer Jer oh, come on, Jerry. Just, that's mine. That's right. <laughs> it's fine. Oh wait, there's five. Is Rhea there? Did she make it? Yeah, Reyes, she saddles up with one of you. Okay. Still four Griffin. All right, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> you tried it. 
I mean, you could push Ray off, and then you only need, you know, four. No, no, I was just looking if there needed to be a fifth name. We're, we're good. So so the Griffins <laughs> take flight and head out to sea, flying just below the clouds. Candlekeep looks no less majestic from the air, but grows smaller as the Griffins soar, Griffins soar westward. Large rocky islands pass below you, and beyond them lies the open sea. After a long journey, you see a windowless, doorless stone tower, which somehow floats in the sky ahead. The griffins pass through jagged holes, riddling the tower's conical peak to land on the top floor below, which has a spiral staircase leading down. Uh, so you guys dismount, and um, the griffins take off in the same direction you just came. Uh, it's very much if WoW realistically represented the griffin riding stuff. <laughs> You'd probably see the same thing. Uh, so heading down, one level down, you see a cluttered chamber illuminated by various objects upon which continual flame spells have been cast. Scurrying around the room is an otter dressed in a tiny red cassock. The otter mumbles to itself in common, mentioning something about a tuning fork. Suddenly it takes notice of you and stands upright. Lulu, wake up, our guests have arrived. Are you an otter? <laughs> At the sound of her name, a small elephant with golden fur appears from under a pile of blankets near a table strewn with alchemical equipment. The elephant takes to the air on feathery wings and lets out a pleasing trumpet sound. That wasn't I'm pleasing. excessively confused. Wait, did There's you say the golden elephant with wings? Yes, the golden furred elephant with wings. Brian's is, not confused. Kairos is very confused. Yeah, there's, just to be clear. this is box text. This was the most confusing box text. Like reading it, I was like, "This is ridiculous." Wait, this isn't Jake. This sounds like Jake. No, it's not Jake. Uh, but wow. it's it's like it's an otter. Uh, yeah, you heard what it said. Um, <laughs> This is certainly devilry, and my eyes flash silver as I cast Divine Sense and make sure that these aren't devils. Uh, what else can you sense? Celestials and undead. Lulu's a celestial. Ooh. Guys, it's this one's actually a celestial. This isn't my... a dark out situation. But I've never seen an elephant so small. Hey, guys, this is reminding me of when my cousin gives me his special, special sauce. Are these, these animals really talking? You you literally talk to cats, Jer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. but, but Slobber Chops is just a regular looking cat. cat. Yeah. Tiny yeah. Elephant. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Slobber Chops is regular except for. He's not a, he's not a tiny elephant, though. I'm a giant cat. <laughs> that doesn't concern you. Yeah, but there's a lot of people. I've never seen, seen an otter, otter dressed in a collar. <laughs> that should be definitely be a character trait. The weird things that Jerry gets uh, <laughs> flabbergasted about. <laughs> um, yeah. So Traxagor says the otter. Uh, <laughs> it's so silly. Uh, he says, oh, yes, welcome. I do believe uh, Sylvira told me you were coming, and I do believe I will be taking you to hell. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, you're is. an otter. I don't think you should go to hell. <laughs> oh, trust me, my good sir. I'll be fine. Uh, He's got to be mighty he... powerful. Be Must he be? To, to be able to get us to hell? Ah, he just looks so cute. He's I got mean, a pen in his hand. He's just going like this. <laughs> he's wearing a Cossack, man. It, that doesn't belong in hell. All right. Yeah, you can take us, man. That's fine. I'm still very confused. Wait, is Lulu coming I mean, with us? I'm Lulu, mi we're supposed to meet you. You're tiny. Oh, yes. I I, I am tiny. Uh, I was a... Uh... And she's talking to each of you in your heads, but n only one of you can hear at a time. But she's repeating it to each one of you and not getting annoyed about it. Uh, 
when you guys ask questions. Um, let's see. All right. Um, she says, yes, sir. I, I'd very much like to go. Uh, I'll, I'll be, if you, if you don't mind, of course, I'll be going with you. You also don't look like you belong in hell. Oh, I, you know, who really belongs in hell besides fiends? We gotta do what we gotta do. I yeah. guess so. I'm with her on that you? one. I'll be fine. Look at who me. Who are you, Lulu? I mean, you're you're I'm an a Holly angel, fan. A, a I don't remember this. much else. A uh, what? I'm you're a Holly what? fan. A you're Holly an elephant. fan? A Holly fan. A holy elephant? A Holly fan. Right. What's a holophant? H O L L Y P H A N T. <laughs> right, I got how to spell it. I think. I mean, I, I'm writing, of course, in my notepad. What's um, your address? <laughs> I, used, I used only four letters to spell holophant, um, <laughs> but I did, and I'm. I didn't ask you how to spell it. Uh, what are you exactly? Oh, I'm the a... last thing that told me it was a celestial wasn't. So I'm suspicious. They told you, or did you sense it? They told me. I am no longer trusting what I'm people tell me. I'm a celestial. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? I'm a Holly fan. Right. She's not getting annoyed at all. By I'm you. a half orc. Oh, that's wonderful. We're gonna have so much fun in hell. Weird. <laughs> I don't. No, I'm just gonna put my pad away. <laughs> I like you, Lulu. I like you too, Jerry. Lulu, can you fight? Um, I guess so. I think I can. You, I have these. I have a lot of memories missing, and I think I know I was in Avernus, but I just don't know some of the details. Um, so like I was, I know I wasn't. I was with Zeriel. When she assembled her her Hell Riders to attack Vernus, um, and we were you know tearing through devils and smiting them and destroying them, and uh, we were so close to victory, and then the Hell Riders betrayed us. Rhea walks out, <laughs> <laughs> and they retreated through the gate and sealed it behind them. Uh. Before she was captured, Zeriel told me to hide something for her. Um, I think it was her sword? And and someone helped me hide it, but I don't remember who. And we found a place to hide it, but I don't remember where. We hid the sword. I escaped Avernus, but I don't remember how. Most of my memory is gone, and I, I, I don't remember why. It's really odd. Right. Um, we're friends with Zariel, as far as you know, right? Yeah, I think so. At some point. Cool. But then that happened. She told me and someone else to hide her sword. And, and you don't know what she's been up to since that happened? I have no memory of that. I have. Uh, right. All, I don't remember a lot. Where, yeah, really, cool. Where, I'm sure where, you'll where have no you surprises. General, when you hid the sword. Should, I'm sorry, we... Jerry? Where were you in general when you hit the sword? Avernus. Like, you just didn't. That's the <laughs> that's it. I don't. I don't remember where. I don't remember who. I don't remember how. I don't remember why. Okay. You told us why. She told you to hide it. But regardless. Yeah, but why did she tell me to hide it? Um. Do you she, know? She, I wish. I wish I knew. What kind of kitty are you? Are you a Maine Coon? I am a tabaxi. Oh, okay. I like tabaxis. I like all kitties. Um, should we? Is Lulu a her? Ha Lulu, Lulu. I mean, I am. I, I, you can you can use her or they or whatever you want. Okay. Um, it. Should we Not tell it? it? That is rude. Oh, sorry. Oh. Um. Should we tell they? 
<laughs> no, no, um, I, I'm not, I'm not starting that conversation. Um, Lulu will encounter no surprises in hell, I'm sure. Toad's fine. Nothing bad happens in hell. Everybody knows that. <clears throat> okay. Right? Sure. The otter is currently just listening and playing with tape <laughs> on its chest. And then this dude, I can't with him. <laughs> This is this is our our way to hell is through the cutest daughter I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, to hell with an otter and a holophant. Okay, so go get Rhea. Oh yeah, Rhea, Rhea. We stop talking about the Hell Riders. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> she comes back and literally, if you thought a human could just be having steam come out of their ears, it would probably be rare if that was possible without magic. Um, so, so, so. Okay, got that, got that. So, Traxagor takes you to a special room as you stand together in a circle. Uh, he found the tuning fork he was looking for, by the way, while you guys were doing that. And, uh, yeah. It's the one for hell, right? Yes, that's the one he was looking for. Um, no, you're going to go to... You have, like, PTSD from... This has, like, a little label on it. It yeah. says hell. It's, he uses a label maker. It's a label maker 5000. Uh, no, you're going to end up in the manse, in the anchor and manse, if you... <laughs> uh, as you stand together in a circle, Traxagor taps the tuning fork on the floor and casts his plane shift spell. Uh, a hot, stinging air assails your senses as you're going through this black, smoky temperature is fluctuating wildly and it starts to get hotter. It's still fluctuating, but just generally gets hotter and hotter, more smoky and acrid and just nasty. And the city street in which you stand is lined with buildings that are crumbling all of a sudden. Uh, you're standing in uh, Elturel. Um, things that are standing uh, are look in disrepair, um, and the ground shudders beneath your feet. In the sky, there's red smoke, and uh, a 400-foot uh, diameter sphere of darkness discharges strokes of bluish-white lightning that strike the city at irregular inter intervals perched atop a distant bluff overlooking the rest of the city is a crumbled fortress. Traxagor gazes up at the black orb nervously and utters a few arcane syllables and disappears in the blink of an eye. Well, I guess he did what he needed to. Um, I guess that's the companion now. Is, is Slobber Chops... Hell? with us no slobber chops was not he was just standing okay like he was he went and had his claws in jerry's pants are you wearing pants jerry we'll say you are <clears throat> uh and then he stepped back as you guys were taken off um he lost his nerve we'll just so say these treats that we got <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll eat them it's fine yeah what about i mean him? i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna keep mine i'm a, I'll, I'll eat them. Oh, it's just jerky, huh? Yeah, yeah. they're from human <laughs> rations. That's right. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's where we're gonna leave it. You guys are in hell. Hall <laughs> Lulu says, uh, "We're in hell now. Yay. We're in hell now." And you're, you're, uh, you're a weird holophant, Lulu. Yeah, I am. I don't have good memories. Just curious, what's a normal holophant like? Fair point. A lot of. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we'll pick up next week on uh, next Monday if you don't mind anybody have anything to plug or anything nope. no sir not. I do uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jake Friday and on Saturdays early in the morning for us Pacific Standard Time folks uh, at 9.30 I play in a Star Wars RPG game on uh, Variant Rolls channel and I play Turk Bango the Chiss 
smuggler and gunslinger so if you're into Star Wars and you're into Wild West type stuff you should watch that variant rolls 930 Saturdays I think I got that right other than that be good to yourself and be good to others we'll see you later